Yes! in the world is the Paradise Arcade Magenta. Why do I need this? Why do I want this? Is it great? Is it good? Who knows? But I'm here to tell you why you should probably consider getting one if you want to spend $100 on a joystick, but that's not the important part. The important part is what this is, what it does, and how it can serve you as a player. Now what the Magenta is, is essentially a contactless joystick. What I mean by that is, is once you go like this, <laughs> As you can see, there's no sound. Compared to a Sonwa JLF, plenty of sounds. That is because you're pushing on a switch to activate a direction. Compared to using the Magenta, you're using a Hall Effect sensor. As you see, there's magnets in there, so it pretty much detects any of the movement. The bottom of the joystick is purposely made for it to work with the Hall Effect sensor. Paradise Arcade actually made an application for you to customize all of your directions to whatever playstyle, to your character, to whatever game. Actually can be one of a million. And I'm gonna show you guys how to install this from step one, from getting it out from the box to putting it in your fight stick box and then get jumping in the big old box right there. One of the things that's gonna make this intimidating for some people is that it is a power joystick. It actually needs a power in ground. If you're lucky enough to have a Brooks fighting board, you can go ahead and plug black wire to ground, red wire to VCC. If you are on another fight stick, unfortunately I can't really help you there. As long as you find a power and a ground, you're usually pretty fine. To get things started, we're gonna to go to the Paradise Arcade Shop's website, search the Magenta and scroll down and go to the software download here. Download the software. Once you open the software, you're gonna be greeted by a standby page waiting to connect to the joystick. At this point, you can plug in the USB that's already provided and make sure that the joystick is not powered. Plug in the micro USB into the joystick while holding the button down and the software will automatically detect the joystick. And as a side note, some fight sticks may not allow enough clearance so it may get caught on the fight stick when you put the USB in or it might blow the cable enough and who knows if there's enough pressure there it might snap it off. Who knows? I'm not really sure but now that the joystick has been detected we can get started. This is what the tuning software looks like. So you got four profiles you can choose from. You can customize them to your heart's content and save them to each profile so you can go ahead and click them and have them uh, load up. Cool thing about this is that you can export a file and export it to your desktop to whatever folder say if you have a Tekken or a Street Fighter or a Blue folder dedicated to you know all your controls you can go ahead and save them there. Next up is the active directions. You can use this to disable like, the diagonals or you can use this to disable the uh, directions and just have the diagonal. Next thing you have is stick rotation. So say if you accidentally installed a joystick in a wrong orientation you can use this to correct that. So you're gonna hit 90, got 180, 270. So it's gonna go ahead and digitally spin it for you. So next up is fine rotation. Fine rotation is pretty much the same thing as stick rotation, but in a lot smaller increment. For example, in my case, I play on my lap, so I don't have the joystick center on my lap most of the time. Every so often, get in a limbo while I'm trying to hit back, but I'll get a down back or vice versa because I just hang out right here. Negative seven is gonna bring me closer to the down back. You can see it's more towards the middle. With the plus seven, it's gonna give me more towards the back. And we'll go ahead and go to zero so you can see the difference. For the bulk of this entire application or software that you're gonna be using, if you have simple controls enabled, you can move everything as a group. As you can see, you can't really move anything on its own. You move everything as a unit compared to if you have it off, you can move everything individually. So say you want your up and down a lot closer or you want to have like this, this wacky weird thing all put together. All right guys, this may be my fifth or sixth time trying to record this. The first time the hard drive filled up and only recorded half of it. The second time I accidentally deleted everything. And the third time I finally got in Premiere and then everything started pixelating for whatever reason. We're, we're fine here. So now that we're here in Tekken, the first examples I'm gonna show you with is gonna be with Lisa. She is a 2D character in Tekken and she has a fireball. Wow, doesn't that look familiar? And she has a DP. So if you have scrub execution like myself, Every so often you'll be in the moment and you'll try to hit a dragon punch and you hit that fireball, man. This application can help you with that. Now everybody knows dragon punch ends with down forward, not forward. 
I mean, this may feel like a down forward, but nope, that's the down forward. You saw how small of an increment that is? So thanks to this application, you can tell that. How can we fix this? How can we put this more in our favor? We'll go to the diagonals and we can actually make the diagonal area a, way, a ways a lot bigger. You see that? With that said, now that you have this large surface area to land that down forward, look at that. We're, you know, we're just gonna do another one. Look, oh man, man, beautiful, beautiful. But even though that the diagonals are a lot bigger now, you need to remember that the down and the left and rights are gonna be a lot smaller since the diagonals are taking up a lot more space now. So that's gonna be a thing to kind of train your hand and keep in the back of your mind so you're not overcorrecting. All right guys, we are here with Brian Fury. I'm gonna show you guys one move. That is gonna be Jet Upper. Jet Upper is front to back really fast, plus two, or medium punch Street Fighter. That doesn't really matter anyway. So this is what the moves looks like. There you go. That's Jet Upper. But if I try to do it a few times in a row, you'll see that every so often my inputs are a little garbage. Okay, maybe a little bit more than garbage. But one of the cool things about this application is that say if you're messing up on a move constantly, like Jet Upper for example, I can actually see in real time what I'm actually messing up against. So that kind of goes back to the Dragon Punch situation where you actually see your inputs and are able to either keep doing it to avoid that area, or you can use the application to help you avoid that area. And what I mean by that is that you can choose a profile that you have set up to avoid that, like this one for example. As you can see, I have the down forward a little bit farther away like I did earlier, but since you're traveling front to back and you want to remove this area here of error, all you gotta do is tone down the down a little bit. Go ahead and tone down the up a little bit. And there you go, now you have more of a straight shot from front to back and can pretty much land it without even thinking about it. Thank you, Brian, for your time and let's go ahead and taunt you it up to the next section. Those examples weren't exactly the most technical out there, but I just wanted to give a brief idea on how the application actually works. Now that I'm done explaining what the software does and what the joystick is, we can get into my personal experience with the Magenta. That shit has been in the frame for too long and this room looks really nice with that backdrop. It's gone, it's gone now. You see that? I like that. Do you like that? I hope you like that. My personal preference for a joystick is the Crown 309 MJ. It's kind of like a Sanwa JLF-ish if it had a rubber grommet inside. And I personally suck at resetting back to neutral for whatever reason. Compared to using a Magenta, you don't have like grommets and like a large range of springs. And it was weird trying to get back to a lighter touch and like kind of make sure that my hand wasn't trying to overextend or like really throw it in a corner because it is a square gate compared to my personal preference, either an octo gate or a circle gate. Going back to a square gate with no switches in it, it's kind of like the complete polar opposite of how I've been playing. So still to this day, I'm kind of back and forth to see if it really suits my play style, but still, I would highly recommend it regardless of my personal preference of it. Just because this, this RAT4 doesn't have a joystick in it anymore doesn't mean I got frustrated, okay? Just because there's nothing in so Now, although I do love this joystick thus far, there are some small things that get to me. For example, if you remove the USB that goes directly to the Magenta, you have to restart the step one process again. So that means you have to undo the bottom of the fight stick, plug the USB back in, and make sure the software recognizes the joystick. My suggestion would probably be to remove the actual hard button from the Magenta and then configure figure it in a way that we can have it to an arcade button. That way we can have it on the outside instead of having to take the entire stick apart, we just hold the button on the outside and plug the USB cable in. Another thing is that the fact that you can't input your own numbers for the directional input, so you have to rely on the sliders for really small increments, which can be a little frustrating, especially if you're while playing online trying to tune on the fly. I know there's training mode, but it's better if you're playing against an actual opponent so you can see if your adjustments are making your play worse or better. And although there are four profiles that you can actually choose from it'd be really nice if you could rename them so then you can actually attach them to a character so you can just load up a profile see the name and click the tune that's right for the character now as you can tell this joystick can serve a lot of purposes and when i was originally making this video i was trying to figure out who this joystick is for and it's pretty much for everybody for example if you're a pro fighting game player and you're constantly making mistakes on your inputs you can use this joystick to go ahead and train your hands to avoid those mistakes or you can bring this joystick with you and literally have a one in a million joystick. Not only is that cool as fuck, 
but you're bringing a joystick that you personally tailored for your own gameplay. This also tailors the streamers where you can have an overlay for your joystick. Yes, I know there's an overlay out there that actually shows that. This shows when your directions are actually pressed or actuated and can give a lot more input on how you're playing and how you're constantly moving instead of just showing when you're left, right, up, or down. And maybe you're just like a scrub like me that wants to try new things. Who knows? Maybe you just want to hit that down two a little more. Maybe you want to hit that dragon punch more often. Maybe you want to make sure you stop missing that dive kick. Maybe your wife won't tell you to shut the fuck up because the Samba buttons are too damn loud and you finally got the silent pads on it, but that Samba JLF with the eight pound spring is still loud and still knocking harder than her on Sunday with the vibrator on. And you're probably thinking, Alex, this isn't the only joystick that doesn't come any switches. For example, the Sanwa with the optical sensor. Yes, but the Magenta uses a Hall Effect sensor, which is far more precise, and you can still change the parameters to whichever way your heart desires. And say, even if you don't like the fact that it doesn't have any switches, you can put these stock Sanwa switches back into the Magenta to make it feel like a stock JLF still. So you have that option as well. Thank you guys for watching. I definitely try to jam pack as much information I could in this video, ranging from what this actually product does, what the software looks like, to my personal opinion, to who it's actually for and what it can do for a player. Thank you guys for watching once again. Do whatever it is you want to do down below, and we will see you in the Welcome next video. To the Peace. Revolution. Hey, come on, come on!